Right, hello and welcome to today's NCBI Labs, <clears throat> excuse me, NCBI Labs technology event. Um, we're here today and we've got a great lineup for you today, more of the best in technology for people with sight loss. So today on today's event, we have um, audiobooks uh, and the NCBI library, and we're going to go through some of the key features from there. We also have uh, a new section, which we kicked off uh, last week, but it went down very well, is what's happening in the technology news. And this week, we're going to talk about three things. There was being a brand new Apple smart keyboard released, and it's getting some, uh, some mixed reviews, and we're going to talk about it with the panel today. Uh, we also have uh, a new announcement from Google, and Google have finally released a set of headphones that appear to work, and Sean's going to debate that with me er later on in the show. Also as well, we're going to talk about a new COVID-19 API, which is a collaboration between Apple and Google in the fight against COVID-19, which is a very interesting technology, technology announcement, and that's going to be coming soon as well. Finishing up today's event, then we're going to hand over to Joe Lonigan, who is um, going to do a two-part session. Today's part one is on Google Home automation, and it's an introduction on how to set up and some of the key features. So that's, um, uh, that's going to be exciting. As I said, Today on the panel, you have um, you have Lena Cousy, who's with us from the library. You also have myself, who's going to do the emceeing today. Jude has gotten a very a deserved a day off. Um, so I'm Kyron O'Mahony. I'm the Chief Technology Officer from NCBI. We also have our panel of trainers with us today. So we have Sean Doran, JP Corcoran, and Daniel Dunn. So I'd like to welcome them all back to, um, to the show today. Um, <clears throat> Just to let you know, uh, as I was saying in the intro to the event, if you have any questions or queries or uh, anything regarding uh, technology, please do email us labslabs at ncbi.ie. That's our, yeah, our email address here. Um, today in our first section, our absent focus section, I'm delighted to welcome uh, Lena Cousy, who is our library service manager here for us in the NCBI. Lena, do we have you on the line there? Yes, hi, uh, Karen. I'm on the line. Um, how are you? I kind of feel like Joe Duffy there when I say, are, are you on the line? But <laughs> um, anyway, I just laugh at my own joke. Uh, OK, so uh, I mean, Lena, basically, for, for everyone that doesn't know, manages the NCBI library service. And given how important of a service that is to our service users and how it's gone through a recent digital transformation shift um, supported by technology, I thought it would be great to have Lena on and run through some of the um, and run, run through some of the of the key services that are available from from NCBI's library. So, Lena, what I might ask you first is, can you give us an overview of the services available from NCBI li NCBI's library? Yeah, uh, thank you, Kyron. Um, the services that we have available um, through the NCBI, li NCBI library at the moment um, are the traditional postal services. Um, so, the books in large print, in audio, CD, cassette. Um, on USB key and in a uh, braille book format as well. Um, we also have um, our uh, digital library and that's operating from uh, normally from our, our, our library premise um, uh, remotely and from Finglas. We have um, a number of books um, on the, the, the digital platform. We have the Bookshare platform and the Overdrive platform um, as well. Uh, so um, I can talk to you about books share, I can talk to you about Overdrive and I can talk to you about the postal distribution service as well. I think what we'll do is we might we might talk a little bit about the postal service first and then we'll focus uh, more on the on the on the technology side of things as well after all we are here for um for so maybe briefly just give me a give me a sense of what the, the postal service is. The postal service is uh, Individuals that are referred to the library service can get um, a book via free post for the blind. Um, a book in CD audio format can go out to the client or uh, on USB key. Um, also uh, in Braille format, so a physical Braille book can go out in the post, as well as a large print book can go out in the post as well. Um, and they're returned to the library through the free postal service. This service uh, in th these difficult times at the moment is operating uh, normally. So we are the only library in Ireland that is operational um, and are sending out and receiving books um, through the postal service. 
Mm. I, I think uh, that was really what I was going to lead to for my next question was, I mean, given the impacts of COVID-19, it seems that the library service is continuing for those people who are visually impaired. Absolutely. We didn't stop. Um, we continued uh, our, and we continue our service through these very difficult times. But we are quite unique, um, Kyron, in the way that we're set up because we're, we're not a traditional public library where individuals come in mm -hmm. um, to our library service to borrow books. Um, historically and traditionally, our, our service users contact us um, by phone, by post, by email, um, and they request their titles that way. Um, and the referrals are made through the, the NCBI uh, referral system as well. Um, and the books are, there, are, are then sent out through the postal service, through the free post uh, service um, that we operate from our, our library premise. Um, so we're not, you, we're not traditional as such as a public library. We're very unique. Um, and in, in that way, uh, our service didn't really stop because the postal service has continued in Ireland in these very difficult times uh, and people are receiving their posts and it's been a lifeline for many uh, individuals um, this particular service because if you can imagine someone who's elderly who's cocooning the postman might be their only person that they see during the day um, that drops in their audiobooks or their braille books to them and the postal service in recent weeks as well have been picking up the books from our vulnerable service users and putting right. them back through the postal system. So, you know, we're working hand in hand with Unpost and it, it's a fantastic service. And we've had a huge demand in the last six weeks mm -hmm. for the service, especially for individuals that are isolating and cocooning um, mm -hmm. and require some form of entertainment that's not the radio or the television um, mm -hmm. so it, it's been very popular so you know i thought maybe for a second i'd take a step back because what what i thought was you know i'm, I'm not in in ncbi a, a very long time but one of the first things that jumped out at me when i was meeting with the the other areas of, of or the other service leaders within the organization is that ncbi's library services were were really ahead of the game not just in provision for people with sight loss, but you know, I think globally in terms of of a digital transformation. You know, they, we we seem to have embraced that one quite quickly. You know, so uh, I mean, and services like Bookshare and 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 Overdrive are, are hugely hugely impactful for our service users. So, what maybe you could tell us a little bit about uh, about the technology journey that you've been on, and then we can maybe talk a bit about um, Bookshare. Yeah. So how, um, how, what what was the key drive, you know, for 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 your team saying we're going to embrace, you know, technology uh, within yeah. our library service? Um, we've moved away from the, the traditional services towards technology. Um, although we, we do supply the, the traditional book services, um, but technology plays a huge part now in our everyday life when it comes to the delivery of books, whether they're audio books or braille books or large print books. Mm -hmm. um, and what we noticed over uh, the last few years, um, it really goes back to ahead figures that were um, distributed about three or four years ago that showed that students in higher education um, in Ireland uh, with disabilities, um, the number was increasing year on year on, but the number of individuals with a vision impairment or reading difficulty or blindness, that figure was actually going down year on year on. Mm -hmm. And that was worrying for us. We were worried that our students leaving school didn't go on to higher education and we wanted to find out what were the reasons behind that? Why were our students not going on to higher education? And one of the main reasons was the fact that their curriculum, their books, their academic books that they need for college, for further education, for higher education, for courses that they might be doing after school, they were very difficult to get in an accessible format very, very difficult to, 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 to find them, very mm. difficult to speak to the publishers, to get them from the publishers. And sometimes the delay could be months and months before a book is sent on to a student in a format that they can access. And this has led to, uh, to many students dropping out from courses 
or finding out that the cores just they just couldn't fit with the with the um, with the time frame that was uh, was demanded from them for their mm -hmm. course. So what happened in that situation? We went out and we had a look um, a couple of years ago to see what was the best practice in other countries. Uh, we looked at Denmark. We looked at the RNIB in the UK, and both um, countries or both both organisations were using the Bookshare platform um, to look after the students um, in higher education when it comes to the delivery of accessible titles. Mm -hmm. And that was really what prompted us to move down that road. We worked hand in hand with the RNIB for um, a few months last year. Um, and luckily, um, we got funding uh, last year to develop our own bookshare platform in Ireland, which has been absolutely incredible. The journey has been incredible. We have made some great friends with Bookshare, with Benetech, the designers of uh, Bookshare. Um, we have designed a fully accessible platform. Um, we have access now on the Bookshare platform to over 600,000 titles in various formats. Um, and that I, equates I, I, to over three million books that are available on the Bookshare platform. I, I just, I, I have to pause for one second, just because I, when people say numbers like that, sometimes, you know what I mean? It's it's just, I don't think that, that the importance of it is. So 600,000 books are available on Bookshare at the moment. 600,000 titles, yep. Yeah. Titles, yeah. And, I mean, that's, that's, um, that's incredible. But I, I thought once what we might do for one second is because I, I've seen you deliver the presentation before on, on Bookshare itself. And one of the things that that struck me about it is it's it's actually draw, jaw dropping in terms of the impact it can have for for people with with sight loss, um, uh, and really what that is um, to me is that I remember from for me going through education and you know being in a classroom you know and that you know you're you're using the the I, I have low vision so I was using a book the same as everyone else but I would literally have eye strain from trying to keep up with my my peers in school. And then you had people that are in my class that, you know, were fully blind and literally their books were being brailled a day ahead of the session that they were doing, you know, so it's an extremely restrictive thing as whereas now you move into a situation through something as powerful as Bookshare and everything's digital. So whatever the requirements are from um, from from your particular um, uh, aspect of, of sight loss, there's there's a, a format available to you. So why don't why don't you maybe give our audience an overview of what Bookshare is? To maybe you know just to give the high level picture of what Bookshare is. Yeah, I mean a Bookshare is the largest digital library in Ireland, with over as I said six hundred thousand titles or approximately three million accessible books that are available. So what happens when a student signs up or an individual signs up to, to join Bookshare? Um, they will get their login details, will be verified for them, and they sign up, they select the title that they're looking for, and they get a drop-down menu with five formats that they can download the book in, their selected mm. title in. And the formats are a Braille-ready file, which is a digital Braille file, a DAISY, which is audio, DAISY with images, a PDF or an EPUB, and sometimes you get Word as well as a sixth format. Mm. So there are these are the various formats that books will appear in uh, or titles will appear in. And then the, the, the client or the student, the member, can decide what format they want to download their book in. They select the format and click on download. It takes seconds and they have access to a book that they can access in a digital format for their for their curriculum for their college or that university. Is, that is absolutely yeah. absolutely huge. Um, so in terms of the, what what types of books are well actually let me let me let me change that question slightly. I think we'll come to that in a moment. Who who can access Bookshare? So who who is it is it is it available to the general public or is it just for people with um, uh, a visual uh, impairment or a vision impairment? Yeah, a Bookshare is available 
to individuals who have a vision impairment or blind or mm. who have a reading difficulty such as dyslexia mm -hmm. um, or a physical disability that stops them from accessing a print book. Um, so for eligibility criteria that we have um, some details on our website. Um, again, if you want to go to our, our website, bookshare.ie, um, that will give you some uh, eligibility criteria as well on who can sign up for Bookshare. The, the service itself refers, you can sign up if, if you feel you have a vision impairment or if you have um, a reading difficulty, you can sign up for the service. We will follow up then with the verification process, either with the disability officer in your college mm. or with mm. uh, NCBI um, ourselves, because we have the register for individuals that are blind or vision impaired, just to verify that the mm. account mm. and that the person is eligible to use the service. And then we will follow on, we'll send the verification note back to the person to say that they're ready to, to start downloading um, from, from the site. And uh, just just so everyone's clear, if, if if I want to sign up to Bookshare now as a member of the public or someone with uh, a vision impairment, ha, ha, just talk me through the process of signing up to Bookshare. Do I yeah. do I email uh, NCBI directly or do I call or how, how no, do I get in No, contact? you don't need to email. Yeah, no, you don't need to email NCBI. You just go to bookshare.ie mm -hmm. um, and at the very base of that page, the first page, there is a sign up button. You just click on the sign up button and that opens up a page which requires your details. It looks for your name, your address, um, your telephone number, your email, and it asks you to set a PIN number and a passcode as well. Um, and it also asks you, why are you using Bookshare? Are you using it as a leisure reader or are you using it for academic purposes? Are you in college? Are you in school? Um, are you in higher education? What are you doing? Um, so we ask for the name of the school or the college that you're attending or the Institute of Further Education that you're attending. And then you sign a declaration to say that you will not pass on the books to any other person or party and that the books are your responsibility. Um, when you download a book, you cannot share it with anybody else. It's your book. Mm. Um, and we, we have the traceability on that as well. And once you sign up, you send in your form online to us. You just submit it basically and we get the verification um, at our end and we will um, verify the account, go through the, the paperwork to make sure that it's all um, OK. And we will send you an email then to say that your account is set up and you can start using your PIN number and passcode to download your books. And is there is there a cost associated with um, using Bookshare for service users? No, no. But Bookshare um, uh, is free. We got funding from the Department of Higher Education, um, and this year uh, the service is free. There is no charge for any of our students that are using it, or any member that's using the service. That's that's uh, an incredible thing. So, I think um, so. Bookshare is uh, obviously an online, it's a, it's a web-based platform. One of the things I think is, is also worth pointing out just from a technology point of view is that it's a fully accessible website as well. So all the latest criteria yeah. for um, screen readers and, you know, uh, meeting the, uh, the, 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 the website uh, accessibility standards of 2.1 and, uh, and 2.0 are all in place on Bookshare. So there should be no blockers to people um, either signing up or being able to download a book. So um, there's one other service. So we have Bookshare uh, within the library. Can you maybe tell me a little bit more about um, uh, Overdrive? Yeah, Overdrive is the second digital service that we operate uh, through our NCBI library. Um, but just, just one last thing actually um, sure. to mention on Bookshare as well, um, is that recently in the last 10 days, we have received the full suite of the Harry Potter books oh, really? in accessible format. Um, so for any of our young readers that would like to receive Harry Potter, um, in a digital format uh, to their mobile phone, tablet or PC. We have the full suite now and you can download them straight um, using the Easy Reader app, which I'll talk about later. I, I but, wish you um, hadn't said yet, yeah, young, re young so, readers. I read Harry Potter when I was 37. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, you're young, you're young. <laughs> <laughs> so um, 
so that's that's the the latest sort of exciting little piece of news that we have that we have the whole suite in Bookshare of the Harry Potter series for any of our our young readers. Um, so Overdrive, going back to Overdrive, Overdrive is um, our audio leisure platform. That's really the way to describe Overdrive. Um, it is a digital platform. So the individual, again, to subscribe to Overdrive, you would need to either send an email to the library at ncbi.ie and you have to be registered with NCBI as being blind or vision impaired. Um, or um, the, a referral comes through the library um, from uh, from the library CRM for um, for the service. And once we pick up on the referral, we set up the account mm -hmm. for the client mm -hmm. or the, the member, the library member. Um, and that is basically a PIN number and a passcode um, that they can use either on the Easy Reader app to download their books, their audio leisure books using the Easy Reader app, um, or they can use the PIN number and passcode um, on their PC uh, mm -hmm. using the mm -hmm. Libby app uh, for mm -hmm. PCs, and they can mm -hmm. listen to their books using the Libby app on their PC or transfer it onto a USB key if they want to keep the book for any length of time, more than seven or 14 days, which is the, the period that you have on the loan period that you have on the Overdrive platform. So I, I think just to remind everyone that's um, that's listening in today, and indeed those people that are, are listening after the fact as well, uh, if you'd like to ask any questions um, to Lena, um, please do send us an email labs at ncbi.ie, or you can use the the question and answers feed directly on um, the live event page. So please do uh, keep those questions uh, coming in. I just before we move on to um, to answer your questions, and I, I do really encourage everyone to keep those questions coming into us. Um, JP, who is one of our uh, technology um, trainers, has put together an overview using voiceover of the Easy Reader app. So I think, Lena, what we might do is we might let the, 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 this overview play from JP, and then we'll come back with some more questions and we'll, we'll talk about the Easy Reader app in, in some more detail, if that's okay. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Cool. So it just takes me a, a moment or two to set up the um, uh, the technology here. And as I mentioned, just to just to reiterate as well, if anyone would like to ask any questions, please do ask them in the Q and A panel, or indeed, if you'd like to, um, if you'd like to um, uh, send an email to labs at ncbi.ie. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to uh, JP for some information on the Easy Reader app. Hello everyone and welcome to this NCBI Labs video demonstration. So today we are going to look at using the Dolphin Easy Reader app with voiceover on an iPad to access books from the NCBI Overdrive and Bookshare Ireland Digital Libraries. For anyone unfamiliar with it, Dolphin Easy Reader is a free accessible reading app designed for readers with low vision, blindness or dyslexia. It is available on iOS and Android. It hosts accessible collections from libraries across the world and gives users in Ireland instant access to quite literally hundreds of thousands of books available from NCBI Overdrive and Bookshare Ireland. The books are available in a range of accessible formats, including audio, EPUB, Word, PDF, DAISY Audio, and Braille Ready files. So what this means is that readers with a vision impairment can expand the text in their screens, adjust color and contrast settings, while readers who are blind can access audio MP3 recordings, Braille Ready files, as well as DAISY audiobooks. What's more, Easy Reader is fully accessible with VoiceOver and TalkBack, which are the built-in screen readers on iOS and Android devices, and it's supported by refreshable Braille displays. Okay, so let's get started. First thing I need to do is to download and install the Dolphin Easy Reader app on my iPad. Let's go to the App Store. App Store. App Store. Sir, cap D O L P H I N space E A S. Why? Dolphin e button. 
filters, re-download, button, loading. Okay, so now the app is Zero percent. 25%, open, filters, button, easy reader, welcome to easy reader, the accessible reading app for people with dyslexia, blindness or low vision. Okay, so now with the app installed and opened, the next thing I need to do is to sign into my account. So I'm going to swipe right to skip the welcome message. Skip, but skip, dolphin button. I'm swipe up to dolphin button. I'm going to double tap this. Email, text field. And from here, I'm going to enter text my details. Field is J P full stop C O R C O R A N at N C B I full stop I E password secure text field insertion point at end okay so now enter my email address email address I'll swipe right to enter my password and I'm going to swipe right again to go to login Login button. Double alert. Login successful. Okay, so I'm logged in. You are now logged into Easy Reader. Okay. Okay, so when Search I sign in, field. I'm taken straight into the My Book screen. So to access NCBI Overdrive and Bookshare Ireland from here, I need to find the side menu button on the top left hand corner of the screen and double tap to open the menu. Side menu. My books button. From here, I can view my books. Manage libraries. Manage libraries. I double tap on this. Manage libraries heading. I can view libraries that I'm connected with or that I could connect with. Bookshare Ireland, NCBI Overdrive. Okay, so swiping right and left, I can go to different libraries. NCBI over NCB and Deslison B. NCB, NCBI, Bookshare Ireland, side menu, okay. manage libraries. Now, I know that I'm connected to both libraries, but what I need to do next is to sign in. So I need to sign into the NCBI Overdrive library. NCBI right, Overdrive. Double tap. NCBI Overdrive, image, swipe right manage again. username, text Enter field. My username and password. Text field. Is editing username character one eight zero two three. Swipe right to password. Pass password secure insertion point at end. Swipe right to login. Login button. Waiting for NCBI overdrive heading. Okay, so now I'm connected to the NCBI Overdrive service. I can start browsing and downloading titles. Uh, just a bit of information about how to access this. If you don't have a Dolphin account already, you'll need to contact the NCBI library to provide, provide you with one. Alternatively, if you're registered with the NCBI, you can contact your local community resource worker and they can make a referral to the library on your behalf. If you're using Bookshare, you can access Bookshare going on to www.bookshare.ie and from here you can complete an online form. It doesn't take more than about five or ten minutes to do. And from there, though, you'll be given uh, access details for Bookshare. OK, so we're in NCBI Overdrive at the moment. If we swipe right, we can search for titles. Search field. Search field. So we can search for titles of books, authors, etc. We can view checkouts. Checkouts. Swiping right again, new releases. New releases. And most popular. Most popular. So let's try this. We go to most popular books. Double tap. Show results in most. We Susan's right. Diary for Nicholas. We James Patterson. Books available. Susan's Diary. Kiss the Girls. James Pat. O is for Alibi. Sit, drink with the book information. Is it me? Terry Morgan. Explore by touch as well. So I find a book that I'd like to download. So is it me by Terry Wogan? an autobiography. I'm going to double tap the screen. 
is it me? here. I can swipe right to borrow the book. I can preview, uh, open up a preview of the book, or I can get a summary of the book if I swipe right again. So swiping right, borrow. Borrow. Button. Preview. Preview. Button. Terry Wogan summary. is one of Britain's best loved radio and television celebrities. So I'm going to swipe up to borrow. Preview. Borrow. Double button. Top. Please wait. That NCBI book, Overdrive. That book Heading. is going to my checkouts. Checkouts. I swipe down to checkouts. Show results in checkouts. Is it me? Wagon. There's Terry. Audio. And what I want to do is to download this book. Is it me? Wagon. Download. Swiping right to button. download. Double the tap. Board download button. If I swipe right here, it will. 24% downloaded. Tell me how far along the download uh, it is at the moment. Okay, just a point here. With NCBI 67% Overdrive. downloaded. 78% downloaded. 95% downloaded. Open. Okay, book is Button. ready. With NCBI Overdrive, generally speaking, books are more suited to leisure readers, so they're all audio books. Um, probably is slightly different to Bookshare, where books are more tailored for people in education and ac academia. So now that this book is now downloaded, I'm going to open it with a double tap. Open. Play. And I can play the book here. Garden of Ireland's prettiest village. And Wicklow, the Garden of Ireland. Unfortunately, you can't eat the scenery. The times were hard for young Michael Thomas and his family. Of an elder brother, two older sisters, a mother. Okay, so I'll stop the book here. Books are available uh, that you download are available for up to 14 days with NCBI Overdrive, so you do need to return them. You can return the books early if you wish. So that's NCBI Overdrive. Let's check out Bookshare Ireland now. So we go back up to the menu on the top left of the screen, menu button. Side menu button. Double tap. My books. And we'll swipe button. down to Bookshare Ireland. Manage la NCBI o Bookshare Ireland. Double tap. Bookshare Ireland. Let's sign in. Image username. T text field is editing. J P fools C O R C O R A N at N C B I fools dot I E. Swipe by the password. Pass password. Secure insertion point at end. Swipe right to login. Login button. Waiting for Bookshare Ireland heading. Okay, so now I'm connected to Bookshare Ireland. So I can start downloading books on this service. Slightly different to Overdrive insofar as when you download a book on Bookshare, it's yours for, for as long as you wish. So you can see how this could be really helpful for students, for example, who they want to access certain school or college books uh, over could be several years. So let's try downloading a book here in Bookshare. I'm going to go to swipe down to categories. My reading lists, latest categories. Australiana. Biography, business and finance. Let's go down to cooking, food and wine. Cooking, food and wine. Double tap. Show results in cooking, pot down and hell yeah, Ryan Splint. Okay, plenty of books to choose from. But I'm going to go up to the search bar. Search field. Search and field search for a book is editing. K-A-M-I-E space O-L-I-V-E-R. Okay, so here's a book uh, by Chef Jamie Oliver. I'm going to see if I can download this book here. Swipe right. Jamie's Food Revolution, Rediscover. And I'm going to swipe right to download. Jamie's Food Revolution, Rediscover How to Cook. Jamie Oliver, download. Abort download button. Open. So download button. is complete. Okay. So I'm going to open this, what's called an EPUB or electronic publication file. Open button. Loading. Text field. Introduction. Now, I can play Heading this level by one. pressing the play button on the bottom center of the screen. Play. 
Introduction Hi guys, I'd like to ask you a favor. I need your help with a food movement I've started. On the surface it... Okay, so you'll hear straight away that that is a synthetic speech distinct from the overdrive service where we heard uh, the book being narrated. Okay, great features here available in Bookshare. Uh, moving around the screen, uh, we can add bookmarks. Bookmarks, button. Uh, swiping right, we can go over to check the, uh, change the text. Text settings. Text settings. Button. So from here, for example, we can change text size. Adjusted. Swiping right. 135%. Uh, and then we can go to 135%. For 140 140%. 145%. 100%, 135%. So it's very, very customizable this app. We can change text color. Text color. Background color. Background color. White. Etc. I'm going to close this here. Close. There's also the option. Side menu. Audio settings. So I can write again. Go to audio settings. From here. Audio settings. We can choose heading, our voice, voice pronunciation. pronunciation. Um, pl uh, plenty of options to choose from here. Okay. Side menu button. Okay, so let's go back to the home screen. App Store. So, guys, that's a very broad overview of how the Dolphin Easy Reader app can be used to access books from the NCBI Overdrive and Bookshare Ireland digital libraries. As we can see, it's quick and easy to set up, and I hope you will agree straightforward to use. I'd certainly really recommend you give it a try. So finally, just a reminder, if you would like to start browsing and downloading books on the Easy Reader app yourself, you can contact the NCBI Library for assistance on 01 864 226, or you can email library at ncbi.ie. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much, uh, JP, for that. Uh a detailed uh, presentation on Easy um, Easy Reader. Uh, Lena, I might just uh, hand back over to you and JP if you want to uh, unmute as well. Great. Okay. Hi, Karen. Hi, Lena. Hey, guys. Hi, yeah. So, um, I, it's funny. What, every time I see see that that application, I am always amazed at some of the details that are there. Some some of the features I hadn't even realised that were were there as well. Um, I mean, it's it's so infinitely customizable for each person's um, um, type of visual or a vision impairment. Absolutely, and it, it's um, also uh, customizable for anyone with a reading difficulty, Kyron, mm. um, as well. And because individuals that might have a reading difficulty, such as dyslexia, contrast is very important, and mm. um, you can set the contrast as. Um, JP was showing us there um, uh, on the Easy Reader app. Um, so it's very user friendly and very accessible um, in many uh, different ways. And you can bespoke it to whatever your needs are, or whatever your requirements are. Mm -hmm. And also as well, uh, which I think is amazing, it's not just Bookshare that's integrating on that. The, the Overdrive is, is also available. So, uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge uh, audiobook uh, listener. And um, as as JP downloaded there, the the Terry Wogan um, uh, biography was it J JP? I think it was. It was, yeah, yeah. Which I started listening to. Yeah, actually myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're listening to it yourself. Yeah. I am. Yeah, I am. Yeah. We get huge. We get a huge amount of questions in about the audiobooks in, in particular. So it's uh, it's good to know that the two of them integrate. Um, what we might do is uh, is. Unless, if you're okay with this, Lena, we might open it up to some questions from service users that have been coming in, uh, yes. just to give people an opportunity to ask uh, Lena some questions. So, Daniel has been working through the questions and the comments just to just to uh, put together an overall list of questions for for Lena. So, Daniel, you wouldn't. Um, Hi, Lena. Questions? Hello, Daniel. How are you? Um, gosh, this is great information there. Um, very, very well done and well presented. And I suppose um, such as how well has been done. We don't have too many questions for you. I'll be delighted to know. Um, our first question came in from Pat and uh, he would like to know, can audiobooks be sent out via email or rather than uh, via CD or USB? Um, 
at the moment, uh, it's a little bit difficult to send out audiobooks by email because of the size of an audiobook. Um, we would need to place an audiobook um, in a shared folder and send you the link to that folder. But again, it's something that we would need to work with the um, copyright holders on that. Um, so it's work in progress. It's something that we are looking into um, because it would make life a lot easier for many of our service users to get um, an email link rather than um, a USB key or um, you know, they can just get a link then by email. Um, but that's something we're working on at the moment. There's, there's a little bit of, of copyright issue linked to that that we need to get clarification on. Fantastic. Yeah, um, let's let's hope that does get resolved. Um, you know, it could, it could be a good opener for for delivery of the books. Um, uh, Peter and um, Brona have delivered a question here and let's say how do you access what books are available so I suppose it's from the point of view um maybe could a browse like going into a bookstore and browsing them or, or do they need to know the book they're after before searching um they can search uh, if, if you're looking say for uh, in the overdrive collection you can search by subject category so you can put in thrillers as a category or romance or history or World War Two and the whole listing of books will come come up under that heading and then you can scroll through and see which ones you would prefer. For the Bookshare platform it would be something similar again um, where you can place either an author's surname uh, in your search bar or you can place a subject matter that you are studying or researching or you're interested in, say cookery or uh, or astronomy, whatever you might be interested in, and you get a listing of books that will appear under that, and then you can make your selection um, from there. Very good, very good. And actually, just while we were asking those questions, another one has popped in. Um, how many audiobooks may I borrow at any one time? Uh, in, if you're in the Bookshare platform, you can borrow as many books as you want. I have service users that have that downloaded, you know, hundreds of books mm -hmm. with the Bookshare. Um, but with the Overdrive, at any one time, you can download two books at any one time. Um, you can set the time frame as to when the book returns back to the virtual library. It's usually seven days, but you can extend that to 14 days when you download the book. Um, and then the book comes back to the NCBI uh, virtual shelf then, um, ready for someone else to download. So up to two books at any one time for Overdrive and as many as you want for Bookshare. Uh, Lena, okay. I noticed that, Lena, when I was uh, using the Dolphin Easy Reader app that I had the option to return a book early. No. Yeah. Would that give me the option then to then load another book? Absolutely, you can yeah. do that. Sometimes you, you might download a book and you just don't mm -hmm. get into it. You yeah. know, you start uh, the yeah. first chapter and it's not yeah. something what you thought it was. And so you can return it. You can absolutely return it back to the virtual library and download another book instead. Yeah, that's no problem Great. at all. Great. Great. It is, yeah. And Lena, just um, I suppose from our server's user's point of view, um, you know, today's event might have sparked a bit of an interest in saying, oh gosh, I didn't realise all this is available from the NCBI as well. And if a service user gets in contact, let's say, with their local IT trainer or their local uh, community resource worker, can they perform the referral uh, on behalf of the service user to the library? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah, that's no problem at all. Um, you can send in the referral um, on behalf of the of the service, the new service user, and we'll we'll take it up from there. Look after them from there. That's that's great to know. Um, JP, I think you have um, a comment in from do, an actual yeah, user. I do. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, for for reminding me. So uh, just this morning, I was in touch with someone. I think you you might know uh, Dorian Kiernan, Lena. Uh, she's living in in Black Rock in, in Dublin. And uh -huh. she's actually, she's here with us today. She, she's joined the live event. So I'm sure she's enjoying listening into the conversation. Uh, Doran has been using, uh, or downloading books uh, um, over the last last year or two, but she's uh, been a member of the library for quite a number of years. And she wrote in a comment, yeah. I'd just like to spend, just to spend the next um, short while just, just reading out, um, just kind of giving us a bit of information about the library, how, how she uses it and, and how she benefits from it. 
So she, she sent me an email just about an hour ago. I'm going to read it out here. And hello, Doreen, and uh, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, so, she said, so this is Doreen Kiernan's um, email here that she sent me shortly, or uh, briefly, um, a short while ago. So over the past eight years, I've gotten great benefit from the NCBI library and only recently started downloading books. Since the start of the cocooning, I've been listening to books on my iPad. My daughter changed one of the settings on my iPad so that the screen never switches off because if it does, I can't get it going again. I can also get someone to set a timer on it. So if, for example, I'm listening to a book late at night in bed, it stops playing after about a half hour. I do listen to some audiobooks on my Alexa via Audible. My grandson set this up for me. It's very easy for me to start and stop the book, but these are quite expensive. So she's saying, I think the NCBI library is a real luxury. Since the middle of March, I've listened to 15 or 16 books. If you'd asked me this before, um, if I'd like crime or detective novels, I'd have said no. But I've got through all of the Harry Bosch, Gary Allen and Donna Leon books on the NCBI library site, as well as some autobiographies. They have a great selection. I haven't run out of any options yet. I'm very grateful to JP for bringing this facility to my attention and would highly recommend the NCBI library to everyone who is sight loss and enjoys reading books. So that's from uh, Doreen. She sent that in a short while ago, Alina. So I just want to thank Doreen for taking the time to send us in your thoughts. And take, I think it does a great job of highlighting the role the library is playing, uh, particularly at the moment for people like Doreen who can access and uh, download books on their iPad, for example. And so hopefully it'll encourage some more people to, to avail of the library service and, and download books using the Easy Reader app or Libby app that, that you mentioned earlier. Yeah, that's a, that's a really, uh, really nice example, JP, I think, isn't it? What, yeah. one, thing, one thing that just reminded me, which drives my wife absolutely mental, is setting the timer on your yeah. audiobook when you're, when, you're, when you're going to bed. I, nearly every single night I fall asleep with an audio listening to listening to an audio book and and such a simple feature as setting a timer is 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 absolutely invaluable. <laughs> so I think what I'd like to do is I want to say um, a huge thank you to uh, to Lena for for coming on today and um, it's it's an incredible service provision for service users supported by technology so a huge thank you to Lena for joining us today. Thank you very much, Carolyn and JP and Daniel and all the team in labs. Thank you very much. So don't forget if you uh, if you want to find out any more information about um, uh, how to get the Easy Reader app installed or any information about the library, you can send it through to labs at ncbi.ie and we'll make sure that it gets across to, to Lena. So again, a huge thank you to, to Lena. OK, so we're moving on to our next section of the NCBI, NCBI Labs live event. It's one that's very dear to my heart because currently Apple is kicking Google's ass in terms of um, of being just a better platform. Um, and what we're going to do now is talk about our technology news. So what's what's latest in the news? So we have the uh, we're, we've three topics for you today in this week's technology news. So there's a brand new Apple Magic Keyboard that's been released. Also, Google have released their brand new Pixel Buds, and we're going to ask Sean to give us an update on that. And also, I'd like to talk about the COVID-19 tracing API, which is uh, an interesting technology tool. So it's one of those one of those points that um, it's a little bit geeky, but let's hopefully hopefully you enjoy um, the sentiment. So, what I would say is to our panel, to Sean, uh, Daniel, and Jane P, please uh, unmute your mic. I'm happy for everyone to have a, a discussion here uh, on this one. <coughs> So, and also, I think it's very important that you contradict me because Apple is starting first, and uh, I, I, I may be uh, I may go on about it for an entire hour and a half. Uh, okay, so last week Apple released uh, their brand new Magic Keyboard for their iPad, and you might be wondering why uh, are we talking about it today in the context of service users, but are people with sight loss? And really what's important is the iPad Pro is used uh, quite extensively uh, via uh, for people with, with sight loss because of the inbuilt accessibility features, but also for people with low vision, it has one of the larger screens that's out there for, um, uh, uh, for, for, for people with low vision, as I mentioned. So one of the biggest complaints that I found uh, with the, the, the existing or the current uh, smart keyboard that's available for the iPad Pro is it doesn't have a backlit. So it actually makes the letters a little bit harder to see for people with low vision. Apple <coughs> has since 
solve that problem with their brand new Magic Keyboard. So let's give you a sense of, of what it is. The all new Magic Keyboard is an amazing companion for the iPad Pro. It features the best typing experience ever on iPad. A trackpad has now been added that opens up new ways to work with iPad OS. And it also has a USB pass through. So it means you're only plugging in one cable. Um, the Magic Keyboard also as well is a floating keyboard, so it raises it that little bit higher. And I also think that's a, a very uh, useful feature to have and allows you to, to attach your keyboard magnetically to, um, to, your, to your iPad. So I've been reading around some of the reviews of, of, of this keyboard and it seems to be very mixed. The functionality seems to be extremely good. So if you're someone that enjoys typing, it has a much more realistic typing feel. The backlit uh, uh, characters on the keyboard make it very easy to 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 see for people with low vision, or it makes it easier, I should say, not very very easy. But also, the biggest issue that I've noticed so far is the price. It comes in at a staggering, staggering, three hundred and thirty nine euro for a keyboard, which I think is 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 a huge amount of money to pay for a keyboard. That's um, the cost of all the over engineering, Karen. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. <laughs> so, um, and I think one of the things I've noticed is that, so on our children's services team, who Daniel, who, who works on that team quite a lot, there's alternatives that are available to spending that huge amount of money on uh, on a keyboard, Daniel. Maybe you might give us a couple of, you know, if if you have the money, 339 euro, go go spend it. But is there is there options that would be just as good that are that are slightly cheaper that you guys have experimented with? There is, Kyron, um, definitely like uh, 339 euro on a keyboard, um, you know, sending that into school and coming home again. It's, you know, it's it, it's a big thing to, to let out there. Mm. Um, there definitely are uh, a range of other ones from Logitech and um, other other manufacturers out there that are significantly cheaper. And now while they might not have the nice slick and feel of of the um of the Apple Magic keyboard, they you know they are quite functional. Um, I suppose one drawback for them is they mightn't have the touchpad inbuilt mm. because really iOS 13 has been the first uh, you know ver software of iPad that has started to embrace the the, the mouse feature of it. So um, I I'll imagine that uh, more and more manufacturers are going to bring out newer ranges of keyboards. Uh, with, the, with the touchpad included. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's definitely one to watch uh, coming How down do the tracks. What's the feedback like from service users that are using the, the, the Logitech keyboard as opposed to the Apple built-in one? I mean, typ typically I see a lot of requests coming in from Mm. Uh, for for sales and you know um, grants and things like that, and we tend to we tend to send out the you know the iPad Pro with the with the Magic Keyboard, which is the uh, oh sorry the Smart Keyboard, which is a little bit cheaper, mm. but it's still still two hundred yeah. euro. Um, so what's the feedback you tend to come that you hear from coming in from service users on on which is the best keyboard to go for? Um, well, with with the Children that are using them, um, there has been very little uh, complaints coming back. Um, mm. You know, they, they kind of get used to the fact that Bluetooth can be a little contrary and you might have to go back in, you know, from time to time and just mm. re rejoin it, you know, maybe tell iOS to forget the device, and pick it up again and, and pair it up once more. Um, there may be, you know, the, the small drawbacks that have come with them, but, you know, at the, at the price points, you know, and the money that you're saving, yeah, you can put up with that. Mm. Another another uh, thing to, I suppose, elaborate on is that they do offer protection for the screen for the iPad in addition to just being a keyboard as well. So while mm. you are transporting it around, you are you're getting a robust back on it. Uh, you know, some of them have aluminium backs even, and you are protecting the screen while it's in transport. So that's definitely a, a win win for you know kids going home and coming to for school as well. Yeah, and I think if you're using, um, I mean, if your iPad is what does they call it, your daily driver for um, for technology or using an employment or it's so important to have a case and have some protection on it because they are they're very expensive and they're very delicate devices so um one of the benefits of maybe spending a little bit of money on on, on a keyboard whether it's an apple keyboard you know that has some of the cool inbuilt features and uh, you know if 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 you can afford it i would say go for it but if, if it's a case that you need something a little bit cheaper and you want to protect your investment in in your ipad you know there is alternatives out there and i think 
you know, um, I don't know from from the from your perspective, Sean and, and JP dealing with 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 other service users' iPads and setting them up for them. Do you find people tend to go for the the Apple keyboard, or would they tend to go for for the Logitech options? Um, mm -hmm. they would mostly go for like a Logitech or, or a Zag, just in terms of price point. Mm -hmm. But um, what what a lot of people find useful about whichever keyboard they choose is especially voiceover users that. You can use the cursor keys instead of swiping on the screen. So mm -hmm. left and right replaces swiping. Mm -hmm. and Which is, and I mean, is really, really important. Yeah. yeah, as, as just yeah that up, up and down on the cursor key uh, would um, like, like go through headings or link, depending on what you've set your rotor to, which is also very handy because if you press up and right on the cursor key, that turns the rotor. Because I know a lot of people have trouble sometimes turning the rotor using the on-screen mm -hmm. gestures. Mm -hmm. So the keyboard really simplifies that there. So you can, you know, instead of swiping, you're just uh, right arrow through the screen. When you get <clears throat> when you get to an icon you want, instead of double tapping, you'd press up and down on the co on the cursor keys together. Mm. That's not not like a double tap. Mm. So it really, it can really speed up the process. If you're doing a lot of texting or emails, or you're sort of doing a lot of browsing, mm. even connecting a, a Bluetooth keyboard to your iPhone is very very useful for some people. Yeah. I know I know we spoke yeah. about this a little bit before, but when you look at um, people that are, are new to voiceover, it can, it can it can be an incredible, incredibly frustrating experience to move from, you know, a visual interface to a purely voice based interface. So something mm -hmm. something that eases that in terms of keyboard usage and having those, you know, yeah. um, keys are, are hugely important. Yeah. And JP, from 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 your experience then with, with yeah. service users, would you have any advice on on our feedback uh, that we've gotten on the best keyboard for an iPad. Yeah, well, actually, you know, similar to Sean there, I think Daniel as well, Logitech and Zag seem to be leading the way in terms of when keyboard, people do see the purchase keyboards for the iPad. It seems to be one of those brands. Um, generally speaking, so sometimes people, service users will come to me and say, well, listen, do, do I need a, a, a Bluetooth keyboard? Like, would, would it be a benefit to me? I think like what we touched on there, I think it comes down to usage. And it, if someone is planning to spend a significant level, an amount of time on their, on their iPad, you know, composing emails and um, like, like WhatsApp messages become very popular on the iPad, I've noticed. And I think in those instances, definitely worthwhile in, in making mm. the investment. Plus as well, like I've come across a lot of service users uh, who that happens to us all, you know, we, we grab our iPad or, you know, um, it gets a bang and so, you know, it's a crack on the screen. So just to have that level of protection as well, mm. I think it's really valuable. So a good, very valuable investment. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, okay, so I, I think what we'll do is um, if you need any any further advice or you're you're considering buying um, a keyboard for your your iPad or, or indeed any um, any computer that you use, don't hesitate to get in contact with us uh, in NCBI Labs. You can just send us an email and we'll call you back. So that's labs at ncbi.ie. Just, um, just one just one point on the on the keyboard there, Kyron. Um, yeah. But what I have noticed, people with the likes of the Logitech or the Zag keyboard. They don't realize they have to be charged because the charge lasts so long and them can last over six months. Really? But then, but so then got two years. all of a sudden your keyboard's not working and you've yeah, got you had the charge up the Apple awesome. keyboard is yeah. pulling power from the iPad itself. Yeah. I mean that is a benefit, you know. I, I, I suppose even it's 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 kind of it's working so well that you forget it actually needs power. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so uh, next in our topic for tech news, this uh, is Google's Pixel Buds. So I know I've been teasing Daniel and Sean ever since they lost the Apple mm -hmm. debate, but I think, um, <laughs> yeah, well, you know. We we'll get you in the long grass. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. So Google have released uh, Pixel Buds, which is, I think they're, how many How many times have they attempted to release a pair of headphones that haven't worked, Sean? <laughs> so, uh, and, uh, well, they, they all work, but how, how well they work is a different different matter. Sure. Um, these new 2020 Pixel Buds have, um, they, don't, they no longer have the wire that's, that attached them in the past, so they are quite comparable to the AirPods where buttons sit in each ear independently. Mm -hmm. and, so um, so tell, tell us about them in the sense of, so they're, they're, they, are, they are a wireless Bluetooth uh, headphone. They are a wireless Bluetooth headphone which connect to your phone or, or, your, or your device it's via Bluetooth and you can download the Google Pixel Buds app, which will also ease that process and give you some control over how the Buds work mm -hmm. and how you can configure them. So the Buds would have about a five hour battery life and they have passive noise isolation rather than noise cancelling. 
So, so what does that mean? Cancelling is running like an algorithm and uh, cancelling out the noise. Passive is just the actual pressure from the fit of the device. Mm. It's making a seal in the ear, which is preventing outside noise coming in. Mm. But saying that there, there is a vent in the buds to allow some noise in so you can hear your environment. Mm. See, I think I, I always find it interesting like that. So I know the bone conducting headphones are very popular with uh, people with sight loss because it allows them to hear everything around them. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but if, if you're using the Google Pixel Buds, do you think you'd still be able to hear around you if they're in your ear? Or do you think not, they not as well if you were using uh, a pair of uh, earphones with noise cancelling, which had pass through, mm. which is going to allow sound from the outside in if you choose that. Mm -hmm. or like n not comparable to the a bone conductive um, device which is going to allow you best of both worlds where your, your ear is completely free to hear everything and actually the sound has been conducted through basically your cochlear or your cheekbone. Mm. And I suppose that the, these would be really more suited to people that are, you know, more into higher quality audio and, you know, that, that mm -hmm. enjoy, enjoy it for that reason as opposed to necessarily using it as a as a tool for voiceover it's not not that it's saying it can't do that but if you're if you're out and about and you know um and when you're taking the walks up the is up to five kilometers now you know it's still important that you have to hear traffic and hear things around you so um but it's i suppose it's kind of coming down to you know are you looking for something that has higher quality uh audio then you maybe lean a little bit more towards something like the the, Air, the google but what are they called again what well, they're called the google airpods I copy <laughs> get the Google Pixel Buds, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, you're right there. Like the, the the sound quality in something like Aftershocks, while it's fine, like it, they're developed were developed initially for people out jogging. Mm. You could also hear traffic, but uh, people with visual impairments would get the same benefit from them. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't have that real high end bass that you would need for uh, you know, if, you, if you're enjoying really good music. Mm. So something like the Pixel Buds would would offer better sound quality over. Um, a bone conductive technology and, and better sound quality than some other um, mm. AirPods. And in terms of like battery life, are they? Um, uh... you, you get about five hours battery life out of them. But uh, the case is actually quite interesting because <laughs> you can get a 10 minute quick charge. If you, if you put your buds back into the case for 10 minutes, you can, you can get an, another two hours life out of them. Mm. And the case also supports wireless charging. So if you have a wireless charger, you can place the case on it. But they also support reverse wireless charging. So if your phone can reverse wireless charge, you can place the case against the back of your phone for a few minutes and it'll put charge into the device for you. Mm. That's that's really cool. So I think what we might do is we might move on to the COVID-19 tr uh, tracing API or, you know, or tracking API. And this is something that is, to give everyone an overview, this is more, I think there's some exciting pieces around technology and solutions for uh, the COVID-19 crisis. And one of the things that I thought was extremely interesting was that, you know, Google and Apple are working together uh, to build an API that will be used for uh, COVID-19 tracking. So essentially, you'll probably see updates coming to your phone shortly, which will allow your phone essentially to anonymously, and that's the key point, track your interaction with other people. So if somebody uh, who you had interacted with has tested positive for COVID-19, they can uh, key that into their application. And then the other person that might have potentially been in contact will get an alert on their phone to say, you could have had potentially uh, uh, potential exposure to COVID-19, which I think is an incredibly powerful thing. Uh, and also, one of the key things about it is it's enforcing privacy and there's going to be privacy in it. So Google and Apple have developed what's called an API. So an API is a technical term for an application programming interface. And what that does is it, is it enables uh, two computers to essentially talk to each other. The app will be available to governments as well, and it'll also be... Um, uh, uh, completely private, as I've said. So, the first thing I always think when you when you when you think about you know solutions to any sort of problem, and you see how we've moved into a technological era, and it's incredibly powerful that we have this technology now in our pockets that could ultimately help limit the spread of of COVID nineteen. So, if you'd like any further information on that, I'd suggest doing a Google on it or googling it. It makes 
fascinating reading to see where some of the technology efforts that are going to be in place to solve this COVID-19 crisis. Again, I'd like to emphasize that that's completely private and it's not something that um, exposes any sort of personal information. And also you can choose not to use it on, on your phone once it's released. It's not out yet, just let it let me clear, but it's something that's been worked on in the background. So I don't know if any of, any of our panel have any any comments on that straight away or what, what maybe Sean, what, what do you think of it as a possible solution to COVID-19 using technology? I think I think it's a great idea um, to, uh, everything that helps and like I was saying to you earlier, it shows you how serious th th this, uh, this is of these two companies are working together. Um, um, but I, I really do think it's very important that so we use everything we can to kind of prevent any Hmm. So apologies. I so I thought my mic went there. Sorry. No apologies. I had a, a small technical issue um, um, uh, with my headphones. Would you believe? Uh, so I just lost. So you might just. Ju um, so anyway, I think if 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 again, if it makes for a fascinating reading, that intersection of technology as a support mm -hmm. for uh, for a solution to COVID nineteen. So. What we're going to finish up today with is uh, an introduction to Google Home. Uh, this is going to be spread over a two-part uh, feature, and it's done by uh, one of our technology trainers, Joe Lonigan. And Joe has put together an overview of how you can use uh, Google Home as someone with uh, sight loss. And um, we will do part one this week, and then next week we will have an additional piece where he goes into, into further detail. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Joe um, um, for our Google Home part one. Hello and welcome to this demonstration of the Google Home. I will be demonstrating this on the Google Nest for me. And this has the Google Assistant uh, installed and it um, gets a lot of information from the Google search engine. As you can see, for those who can see, it is a small voice activated speaker and it is circular. It's got uh, touch sensitive buttons. On the left hand side, we have volume down. On the right hand side, we have volume up. And in the middle, we have play slash pause, and that also hangs up and answers phone calls. Um, this can be placed on a table or it can even be hung on the wall. Also on the back, it has, on the side actually, near the back, it has um, a slider switch. The mic's off. That turns on and off the mic. So I'll be advising you to turn your mic off, as I'll be saying the waveboard a lot, which is hey Google or okay Google. So. Um, this, these can be bought in um, any literary store, uh, such as Harvey Norman, Curry's, Littlewoods, DID. It can even be bought in Tesco's. And they're retail at approximately 60 euros or less. And the previous version can be bought for as little as 25 euros. So what do we need to set up this device? We need a Wi-Fi connection. We need a um, Google Home uh, app on our smartphone or tablet such as an iPhone or an iPad. Um, we also need a Google account and we need this device plugged in. Um, one of the other things I like to do is turn on the accessibility options. Uh, the accessibility options means every time I say something to Google, it beeps to let me know that it's listening to me. So I'm going to try a few things here now. The mic's back on. Hey Google, what can you do? Here are some things you should try. You can say, how many liters in a gallon? Or what's the weather tomorrow? Okay, so she gives an example of a couple of things she can do. Um, hey Google, how do I set up the Google Nest Mini? Here's a summary from the website review.com. How to set up the Google Nest Mini. One, plug it in. Two. Download the app. Three, add your mini to the Google Home app. Four, connect the Google Nest Mini to Wi-Fi. And five, get to know your new smart speaker. So there's a, a quick 
um, example of how to set it up. And anything that you, you can think of, you can ask the Google um, Nest Mini as it is worked off of the Google search engine. So we could also ask it, hey, Google, where do I find accessibility options in the Google Nest Mini? I found five on the website google.com. Google Nest display accessibility settings. Make sure your phone or tablet is connected to the same Wi-Fi network as your Nest display. Open the Google Home app. Tap your Nest display device. Scroll down to device settings, then tap accessibility. And finally. Okay, so that's for, that's um, how you get accessibility. So it's in the Home app, um, more settings, accessibility, then you turn beep sounds on. So every time I say Google, you can hear a beep sound. So that's what the accessibility is all about. Um, I only have it set at the start sound. I don't set it at the end because I so used to using it. I don't. I don't need that. Um, okay. So what else can we do? Um, we can set a reminder. Hey Google, set a reminder. Uh, take my what vitamins. Is the reminder? Take my vitamins every day at nine a.m. Sure. I'll remind you tomorrow at nine a.m. Great. Also, you can do loads of things like you can. You can play songs on this, um, you can uh, play Google Play Books. So I'll just have a quick, really quickly, I'll do a couple of those little simple things. Hey Google, play Phil Collins. Sure, check out this YouTube music station based on Phil Collins. Okay Google, stop. We'll stop, uh, there's any copyright infringement is getting done on us. Um, okay, Google, uh, read me a story. Okay, here's Snow White from Story Nori on Google Play Books. Snow White. A long time ago, when the snowflakes fell like feathers, a queen Okay, Google, so stop. So, as you can see, it, it uses Google Play Books. It, it's not connected to... Oh, and there's a window. It's not connected to Audible as um, Amazon and Google I don't speak. But that, so that's the only downside, I would say. So what else can we do? It's, um, it's great for um, things like it's connected to Google Maps and uh, in this time of isolation and um, uh, social distancing. And we're also and not allowed to walk more than 2K. So we can plan out our journey. So I'm going to try something like um, finding local landmarks that are approximately two kilometers away. So I'm going to try Callan Golf Club. Okay, Google, find Callan Golf Course. Callan Golf Club is on Geraldine in Callan and is 1.8 kilometers away. Great. Okay, Google, give me walking directions to Callan Golf Course. The best way to get to Callan Golf Club on foot is via Mill Street R699 and will take about 33 minutes. I've sent the directions to your phone. Great, that's another thing it does. It sends um, directions and links to your Google Home app and you can open it in the Google Maps app on your phone. Um, so uh, we can move on now and um, we will talk about radio and podcasts. It's brilliant for radio and podcasts. So first, I'll Try the radio. So, okay, Google, play Q102. Streaming Dublin's Q102 FM from TuneIn. Okay, Google, play RTE Radio 1. All right, here's RTE Radio 1 on TuneIn. Flips, the actual chief of staff of the IRA, Sean Rust. And another good thing about playing radio stations is you can, um, on this device, you can pause and play. You can also re rewind. So if you're interrupted, listen to something, you can rewind it a few seconds. Okay, Google, play BBC Five Live. Streaming BBC Radio Five live from the BBC. Sometimes a little bit slow. Oh, so oh, yeah, yeah. Right. I wanted to talk about the other session of domination. Um, for you, I use my hands. Tap on the left hand side of the device. Eighties, 
won six world titles, held the number one record for seven consecutive seasons. So, only the one had to play for a few seconds. Football was never put. Yeah, okay, Google can. pause. As you can see, I paused it. I can also play it with my hand by tapping the top, the top middle. For the large part, Daily Top so there there, played. Moses the said Moses and, uh, 107. Okay, Google. Rewind 10 seconds. The large part, Daily Thompson and Ed Moses. There you really see it, it rewinded. So seconds. that's um, radio, basically. That's phenomenal. Funny. Really good for radio and really radio easy. Wimbledon okay, Google, stop. List. Which list? Okay, Google, stop playing the radio. Sorry. Even the levels of. Okay, Google, you were stop playing the radio. Great. Uh, it works. As you, can, as you can see, it's it's also not perfect. I will try and cover as much uh, things as we can today. Um, and if there's a demand for a part two, I will uh, do a second demo. But we're going to move on now. And we'll try podcasts. Okay, Google. Play the Sight and Sound Technology podcast. And play a couple of um, blind related right. technology it's podcasts. Started. Sight and Sound Technology podcast, episode move. 20, announcing our Braille Sense Polaris webinar. Hi, this is Stuart Lawler. Welcome into another short Sight and Sound podcast. This is episode number 20. And so that's a good friend of our Stuart Lawler. Of course. I'll show you how we can pause that. Okay, Google. It's coming. Pause. Also, oh, another good thing about podcasts. Sorry, I don't understand. Wednesday. Okay, Google. Pause. Now, yeah. please she stop listening to me. Now, so a good thing about podcasts is um, it tells you what's coming up in the podcast, uh, so you don't have to waste your time listening to things you're not interested in. You can also play the previous episode. Okay, Google. Play the previous episode. Sight and Sound Technology Podcast, Episode 19, COVID-19 Announcement. Hello and welcome <laughs> to the Sight and Sound Technology Podcast. My name is Stuart Lawler, and this is episode number 19. Okay, Google, play the previous episode. Sight and Sound Technology Podcast, Episode 18, Introducing more Marshall. Hello and welcome into the Sight and Sound. Okay, you get the idea. It's really easy. You can also say next episode, and um, you can also fast forward through a podcast and rewind through a pod podcast by just giving the command to Google. So um, there's other blind related podcasts. I'll play one now for a second. Okay, Google, play Freedom Scientific Podcast. All right, here's where you left off in Freedom Scientific Podcast FSCast. for. Cast 182, NFB President Mark Rico Bono and ACB President Dan Spoon on coping with COVID 19. There's a podcast for uh, JAWS and Fusion and Zoom text, things like that. So that's really interesting, and they have interesting articles and tutorials on how to use JAWS. And if you're interested in finding out what the most popular podcasts are in Ireland and things like that, just ask Google. Okay, Google. What are the most popular podcasts in Ireland? Podcast series frequently mentioned on the web include An Irishman Abroad, The Two Johnnies Podcast, Irish History Podcast, and others. Okay, Google. What are the most popular podcasts in Ireland according to the Irish Times? Sorry, I don't have any information. Okay, try something else. Okay, Google. What are the most popular gardening podcasts? Seeing as we're all at home, I'm trying a bit of gardening at the moment. All right, here are 10 podcasts to try. Let's start with Epic Gardening, daily growing tips and advice. Okay, so you get the idea. You can ask it, uh, questions like that, and um, hopefully you'll come up with some results that will suit you, and uh, you could try maybe what are the most popular educational podcasts, that kind of thing. So there we have it, uh, part one of Joe's uh, Google Home demonstration. Joe, unfortunately, couldn't be with us today to uh, take some questions. So 
what I might suggest is for those people who are listening in or people who are listening after the fact, um, please uh, please do email us, labs at ncbi.ie, and we'll collate all of the questions for Joe, and he'll be available on next week's live event. So that brings us to the end of today's uh, live event. And I just want to say, uh, if you would like any more information on NCBI services, please phone one 850 33 That's one 850 33 4353 Or you can email info at ncbi.ie. If you'd like to support NCBI, you can go to donate.ncbi.ie. That's donate.ncbi.ie. Next week, we have um, uh, an overview of Netflix for, and how to set it up and how to use it using voiceover, which is a, an extremely um, uh, interesting way to do it. I know it's incredibly um uh, incredibly powerful way to uh, uh, enable Netflix. So that's coming up next week. Also as well, we have the second part of, of Google Home from Joe. And as a reminder, he'll be available to answer your questions. Um, I'd like to remind you as well, if you have any technology support issues, or you, we have a technology support line that's available to service users and their families. So you can call us from nine to five, Monday to Friday, uh, or you can call us nationwide on 1850-92-3060, and you can email labs at ncbi.ie. So that's it from us today here on the NCBI Labs live event. Thanks everyone for joining and those people that have been with us live. And if you're listening after the fact, uh, thank you for listening as well. And we will talk to you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>